all my books that I illustrate, I actually think of them as little windows. And I'm trying to capture the universe of what the writer is actually writing about. And I want you to step into that universe and experience when you read it. And once you're in there, you can look at the cover and, and then you're inside that universe and just get lost in it. My name is Stephen Yule. I'm an illustrator who illustrates the covers to science fiction novels. I love collecting insects and bugs. And let's face it, insects and bugs are about as alien to us as you're probably going to see anywhere in the galaxy. So actually studying the way that insects are formed really does help a lot. This is called Tales from Jabba's Palace, and it's actually all about the aliens from Return of the Jedi. What's gratifying to me is this particular painting Lucas actually owns now, and he actually bought the painting from me, so it was kind of like my painting went home, and there it still hangs there in George's place. It's great. This is a series of books based on the aliens' movies. They're just fun books to illustrate and fun books to read too. I mean, this particular book, Steel Egg by John Shirley, was extremely entertaining. And in one part of the book, the aliens are actually trying to get inside this passageway to get at some of the humans. I wanted them to feel like they were coming at the, the viewer who was looking at the book, but the two aliens trying to actually come out and get you. <laughs> it really sums up what the aliens' books are about. Carnage. Carnage, fun, and more carnage. This is called Have Mercy by first-time writers Jada Jones and Danielle Bennett. This is about a world where mechanical dragons exist and go to war with each other. This is actually a dream job for me because two things that I love to illustrate are metal and dragons. I always picture going outside and looking at the sunrise and a flock of dragons just flying across the water there and think, God, how incredibly beautiful that could look. And that's what's exciting about doing science fiction and fantasy, is things that you envisage, you actually get to illustrate and to make them look like they're happening. This book is Sandworms of Doom by authors Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson. I thought this particular scene that Kevin wanted me to do was just extremely provocative and that would just stir people's like wow factors, like what is that? A sandworm in the water. And I actually created the harpoon gunner and he actually wrote it into the story for me because he really liked the idea of it. If you actually closed in on the details of this thing, you'll even see the texture on the skimmer, the metal texture on the deck of the ship. It's a detail that even though you don't see it, the audience knows it's there. If I'd left that out, there would be something missing. What I'm best known for is creating world-building illustrations for the covers, encapsulating the whole environment. I want you to look at one of my illustrations and want to be in that world, what you're going to read. This is by renowned writer David Weber called Off Armageddon Reef. It's a mesmerizing world-building story and multiple great characters. This is one of those worlds where you'd really love to just step in there and just taste it for a while and see what it's like smell the medievalness of it. One of the very first books that I actually was asked to illustrate was a repackaging of this series by Isaac Asimov called the Foundation Trilogy. These books really are the cornerstone of science fiction in terms of the quality of the writing. Foundation and Empire is a story that's based on the fall of the Galactic Empire. The cover for this book is actually a tiny little part of the story. The Foundation guys in the ship here are being chased by these guys in the red ship. The background is actually the planet Trantor, which is a planet completely covered in metal. This artwork at this point is 15 years old, and that's really special to know that you did a piece of artwork that long ago that's still being used today. Who knows in the future they might have holographic colors where you can actually press a button in the book and the world encompasses you. Who knows? I never would have thought I would be illustrating these on the computer 20 years ago using a mechanical pen that paints with pixels of all things. I mean, how science fiction can you get there now?